Um, so uh, I'm Holly Wright and I am from the Archaeology Data Service at the University of York in the UK. Um, and I am, uh, our role within Shock is to bring uh, our experience uh, working with archaeological data um, to, to Shock. Um, and much of that experience comes from our work as the deputy coordinators of the Ariadne Plus uh, infrastructure for archaeological data. Um, but what I'm going to talk about today is very much the work of Carrie Binding and Douglas Tudhope uh, at the University of South Wales, uh, who are partners within Ariadne Plus. Um, so, now I seem to have lost, oh, there we go. Right, so, um, just to give some very quick background on Ariadne and now Ariadne Plus, um, Ariadne uh, is funded under the EU Infrastructures uh, Program and it started, the first phase started in 2014. Um, and we had uh, 24 partners in 13 countries using nine languages and 27 of their own uh, subject vocabularies. Um, by the time it, we were finished with the first phase uh, of the infrastructure in 2017, uh, we had uh, aggregated 1.9 million uh, metadata records and um, we ended up uh, mapping our subject vocabularies via the Getty AAT, which I'll talk more about in a minute, uh, which totaled uh, 6,416 mappings that were produced through this process. Uh, we are now in the second phase of Ariadne, which is Ariadne Plus. Uh, we're just coming into finishing the first, we're just past the 18 month mark. So we're not even halfway through yet at this point. Um, this time it's 41 partners, 29 countries, 22 languages. And at this point, we don't actually know how many subject vocabularies that's going to be, um, but certainly considerably more than we had in Ariadne. Um, and, and basically that aggregation work is all very much in process right now. Um, we've been able to reuse and revise a lot of the uh, work that we've been doing, that we did in the first phase. Um, but of course we are adding vocabulary mappings from the new data partners. Um, and this time we're also adding uh, Wikidata mappings um, to further enhance uh, the multilingualism for uh, Ariadne. So, um, so why do we? Why did we need vocabulary matching in Ariadne back in 2014? We were we were looking at what the situation was, and uh, obviously most of the source data sets, and this is I'm sure the the case across most of the social sciences and humanities, these data sets were not produced uh, with aggregation and reuse in mind. Um, we had we were working with uh, not only multiple languages but different types of. Uh, spelling, different levels of specificity in, in the way these vocabularies were created. Um, and of course, text-based search is very much uh, limited by all of these problems. Um, and the other thing was we were very, we were very keen not to just uh, map terms. We were very much needing to map concepts. We felt in order to have trust in the search that we were, searches that we were creating, um, I do apologize for the sirens. I, <laughs> um, that basically it was important that the concepts, um, that the concepts were matching. All right. Um, so this was kind of the situation that we were looking at. Uh, we had all of these different, we had different terms um, and how do we, how do we figure out how we express the same thing? Obviously mapping everything to everything is an absolute mess and not ideal. Um, and, and we would want to include all of the variants uh, when someone's making a query anyway. So um, thinking further about how to, um, how to deal with this. Uh, essentially, we thought, well, okay, what we need to do is map all of the local terms to one central concept, basically what we, what we were referring to as a neutral spine. Um, and, and once again, very important that, the, that we are mapping concept to concept, not words to words. Um, making sure, and, and it was incredibly important that we use the, that we work directly with the domain experts. So the people who were doing the mappings 
were the archaeologists who use these vocabularies every day in their work and uh, we felt could create the authoritative mappings conceptually. Oopsie. So this is what it looked like. So we ended up um, choosing the Getty AAT. We went, we spent about a year discussing what the best uh, vocabulary to map to um, would be. And in the and we did a bunch of, uh, once we decided that the Getty Art and Architecture Thesaurus was going to be a good candidate, we did a bunch of testing to make sure that it was gonna be fit for purpose for archeology span and it was. Um, and this allowed obviously that all of the different types of vocabularies, uh, simple lists of terms and concepts or more structured thesauri uh, to be uh, all, all mapped to that central spine. And in, in order to do this, because obviously we're working with archaeologists, we're not working with people who are necessarily uh, digital heritage specialists, uh, we created a, a mapping tool um, which has now been uh, very much updated for Ariadne Plus. So this has had about six years of development at this point. Um, and it is, this tool is essentially allows you to match your local subject terms to the Getty concepts. Um, it allows you to search and browse the Getty AAT live so that you can uh, make sure that you're happy that the scope note that the Getty is describing is indeed what you uh, conceptually feel that it is. Um, and, it, and it very much is not just automatically matching things. Um, we feel really strongly that the domain experts need to actually do this in a manual way so that they have confidence um, in, in those mappings that they're, that they're creating. Um, so obviously we created this for our, for our infrastructure, um, but this mapping tool is uh, freely available online at the address on the slide, at the, at the web address on the slide. Um, other uh, vocabularies can absolutely be uh, loaded into it as well. You don't have to use the AAT. I think there are quite a few uh, additional vocabularies also there that you could choose from to map to. So we, we very much want this to be used uh, by anyone else who uh, would find it useful. Um, and uh, so this is what it looks like. I won't go into the, everybody knows about SCOS and how SCOS works. It's just basically SCOS mappings. Um, and uh, so basically we had, uh, we were trying to make sure that we were expanding the search, that this was allow it, uh, the mapping to the AAT, we were going to be able to fully take advantage of what that meant in terms of inference. Um, and basically being able to uh, have links between additional records that would not have worked uh, otherwise. Um, and so here's just an example. Um, of if you, by mapping to the AAT, most of you are very familiar with the AAT, so I won't spend a lot of time on this either. Um, but obviously the hierarchical nature, again, allowed things to be, uh, allowed things to be expanded uh, in mul more multilingual ways, because of course the AAT is also translated into quite a few languages at this point. Go on. Um, and uh, everything is uh, fully exportable as linked data and a variety of RDF serialization so that you can take that mapping and use it however you need to use it. And this is what it looks like in the Ariadne portal. So when you go to do uh, a search for something, you get uh, AAT subject term uh, uh, suggestions during the search um, and it will basically bring up uh, what different possibilities uh, from already pre-populated from the AAT. Uh, if you click on the, the I for information, it'll actually take you directly to the scope note. So you can decide if that is actually the term that you want to use. Um, right now, this is searching only in English, uh, but our, our goal in Ariadne Plus is to allow you to put in the search term in Dutch and it will return anything in any other language. So, um, English will become a neutral pass-through language, basically. Uh, and and ascent, so when you actually find something you want within the Ariadne infrastructure, you, uh, within that record for that individual, um, that individual record, you have both the AAT mapping, and again, you can click directly through, and so you can see how it's been mapped 
and you can see the scope node if you want to click through to that. But you also see um, what you can see in the circle is this was the original subject mapping. This is the way the archaeologists originally mapped it in their local vocabulary. So we've worked really hard to make sure that transparency and how these mappings were created uh, are, are very easy to find. So I'll just leave it there. Um, here's some more information about it, including the links to uh, the Ariadne portal. If you wanna try it, we are in a new version that's beta, whoopsie. Um, I don't know why that moved. Uh, we're in a new version that's beta, so um, it's, uh, it's not 100% stable right now because we're very much working on it. Um, but the vocabulary matching tool, um, do feel free to use that and think about if it's something that would be useful. Um, and there are Doug and Carrie's uh, contact details in case you want to learn more directly from the people who don't. And I'll leave it there. Thank you.